We are talking about the Euler line, which is a special, so to speak, highway for any triangle. For any triangle, you can draw this highway, but you need to identify some very special points for the triangle. You can do everything that we talk about today using only a straight edge with no markings and a compass. So these constructions are called Euclidean constructions. So let's start with the first point. Well, you can take the midpoints of each of the sides, connect them to the opposite vertex. This segment here, CD, has a special name. It's called median of the triangle. Okay, so how many medians we have is three. The fact that this worked for one triangle does not guarantee that it will work for all. And so should I draw a lot of pictures here and try on each of them? or should they use some technology? Let's use technology. So let us now experiment having a different triangle. Well, they seem to intersect. Ooh, fancy. I can get wild. Ooh. So it looks like for any triangle, we will have those three segments intersecting in a point. Well, that point turns out to be the center of mass or our point, which also is known as centroid, or in Eastern Europe, it is known by the name Medi Center, which simply says it's the center of the three medians. The other point will have some practical implications if you have two villages and you want to build a railroad so that no matter where on this railroad you build a station, the people from the two villages will walk the same distance to that station. It's called the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Hmm. No matter where you are on this railroad, you build your station as people from both villages will walk exactly the same distance. Suppose you have three villages which want to build a school. Where will they build the school so that kids from all three villages walk exactly the same distance to the school? If you want villagers from A and B to walk the same distance, then you have to be on their perpendicular bisector. You can also say, how about being fair to villages C and A? Those villagers have to walk on the corresponding railroad. The school should be built where the two perpendicular bisectors intersect. So if we call this O, OB is equal to OA and OA is equal to OC. This is different to the Medi Center. Yes, it is a very different one and it has a name. It's called the Circumcenter because they're referring to a circle whose center is O and that circle passes through the three vertices Right now, the circumcenter is inside. The moment it passes the triangle, that triangle seems to be a right triangle. And this is true. Now, if we push the circumcenter out, then the triangle becomes obtuse. And this is a property which is true for any triangle. That may not be the most optimal position for the three villages, but if you want to be fair to all three, then you may have to take it out if they form an obtuse triangle. Which one is the actual center of the triangle? There is no actual center. It depends on your viewpoint. So both of them deserve to be called centers of the triangle. So the area of a triangle is base times height, also called altitude, divided by two. All right, so let's locate this height. So we need to drop a perpendicular from point C to side AB. There's your right angle. I'm so good, I can do it from any yeah. position. I'm just kidding, I will turn it. Guess what happens? Those three altitudes intersect in a point. That point, usually denoted by H, is called the orthocenter of the triangle. And in mathematics, when you say that some objects are orthogonal, some lines, you really mean that they're perpendicular. So we're intersecting the three perpendiculars, or the three altitudes in this triangle. And again, they happen to intersect in the same point. So now we want to again check if this is not a coincidence. 
So let us use our magic software. Yes, we will move it around. Now watch what will happen with this ortho center as I try to get it next to C. That triangle will be right. So you can push the ortho center out, but it will again happen when the triangle is obtuse. So that's the third coincidence we have seen. We have three different centers. We are wondering which one is the most important. There is no good answer to that question. Which is your favorite? The centroid. So now... Why do you, hang on, why do you like the centroid? Ah, because... Oh, there is something we didn't prove. This guy, AG, 2GE is like 2 to 1. It's twice as long. And the same thing happens on the other medians. So they are all in ratio 2 to 1. This is a property which was part of the regular geometry program in Bulgaria in maybe 8th or 9th grade. And I remember its proof with similar triangles. And I was astounded how you can prove such complicated facts using basic geometric tools. Okay, so now if you are brave enough to draw all three in a single picture, Okay, well, I'm just going to basically close my eyes and draw three points. Will those three points lie on a special place? Oh, uh, well, with you, they probably will. Probably? Well, let's try. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to do it on the side. Okay. <gasps> Almost. Okay, I think you have to do it. Even with your eyes closed, <laughs> you do perfect mathematics. Ready? Here we go. Okay, Brady is attempting shut. My eyes are shut. to put three points. He almost got them in a very special position. But not quite. But not quite. Any three random points will rarely be on a line. Very rarely. That's a very special case. In fact, of probability zero. How about the three centers? Are they in some general position to each other or are they relatives of each other? They are related somehow. So you have the mediocenter, the circumcenter and the orthocenter. You have the three medians the three perpendicular bisectors and the three altitudes. Let's simplify it. So we are looking only at these three points. Let's see what is happening. So now let's see if these three centers indeed always lie on this line. Oh, they look like it. Ooh. No matter what the triangle is, no matter how I pull these points apart, the three centers seem always to lie on a line. And the theorem says that the three centers of a triangle, circumcenter, mediocenter, and orthocenter, always lie on a single line called the Euler line. There are lots of things that turn out to be true once you know that there is this line. There are other centers in the triangle, also defined using certain rules that happen to lie on this line. And so this line turns out to be sort of a highway for the triangle. There is one very important center called the in-center, which almost never lies on this line. It refuses to lie there. So let's look at it. We will attempt to draw a circle which is inside and it touches each of the sides. What you do is you draw the angle bisector of angle A, you draw the angle bisector of angle B, and the angle bisector of angle C. They intersect in a point. The center of a circle which touches the three sides of the triangle. So again, the question is, does this in center lie on our highway? Let's check on the computer. It's off the line, it wants to be on the line, but we are not managing. Now watch what will happen when. Ah, this is it. This is not just any triangle. It is an isosceles triangle. And so the Euler line in this case passes through vertex C. And it is the median, altitude, and perpendicular bisector, plus as a bonus, the angle bisector of angle C. So it is all of those, and therefore it will pass through this in-center too, if it is the angle bisector. But this happens only if the triangle is isosceles, and that's not easy to prove. What is the highway, the Euler line for an equilateral triangle? So this is the only case where all of the centers collide in one, and you cannot draw a line, it's just a point. From now on, once you see a special point for a triangle, 
you can always ask the question, does this point lie on the Euler line or not? One fourth of the big one, and you can see its siblings on the sides, these are all congruent for congruent triangles. So, what is happening here?